Okay, Balls, what's on your mind? Hey now, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is another episode of the Balls from Elwood Show. I am, in fact, Balls from Elwood. We have a very special show tonight. We are live, uh, which is exciting. And not only that, I have a very, very good friend of mine, uh, a special guest. Uh, you know him. I know him. Say hello to Speech and Penman. How are you doing, everyone out there in podcast land? How are you doing? What's going on? We've got a lot of shit to talk about and cover. We're actually we're actually here live at the casting couch this week, in case you're wondering about our set here. Uh, they, they gave us money to actually go to the casting couch, and we're actually going to be right from the casting couch. So occasionally you might see people go back and forth here, and uh, we won't make out with them, you know. So uh, <laughs> other than that, what, what, how should we start this off here, Speech? Uh, we got... Uh, Still, we went to Steel City Con. Why don't we yeah, talk about that first? Yeah, we did. Well, wait a minute. Before we do this, I want to ask one thing. Did you hear that Brain had the new girl plan? I have heard that. I keep up with the, uh, you know, through the grapevine all around the uh, Gonzo podcast, uh, you know, as the world turns uh, type shit. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But I just wonder how we this is going to work. These two have... Never met, and the first time they're going to meet is at the sex expo. Now, that's going to be kind of awkward. How's that going to work? <laughs> well, that, that, I, <laughs> that I did not know. Uh, you know and it looked, oh, wow. Um, well, let's hear. I love Brain. I wanted to start out and say that. I'm a fan of Brain. I think he's a great guy. That sounds to me like a very, very bad idea. Here's why. Let's say you meet your lovely and uh, you have a great time, and she's cool with it. You know, uh, you don't even know if she's saying she's cool with it just to be nice, or in fact, she really is kind of cool with it. But here's the thing. Let's fast forward 20 years. You meet your beloved. You guys are together. You see that look in her eye, and, you, you know, you, you have that bond, and, you know, something happens. You have... You get together. You, you get married, and then, like, you're at a dinner situation, and somebody's like... Oh, wow, you're such a cute couple. Like, where did you guys meet? What was your first date? And then Brain's going to have to go, um, actually, yeah, I took my, uh, my took, I took her to the, the, the dildo convention, actually. <laughs> yeah. well, there's a lot of condom, uh, economy there. Comedy. <laughs> um, but, I mean, it's kind of straightforward. I mean, how how can you, I mean, you'll be talking to her, and while Brain is talking to her, he'll have his other eye on all the porno stars walking by. And it's, I mean, it's basically saying, hey, we're at the porno convention. I'm horny. We got a room. Let's go upstairs and fuck. That is a good, that is a good point. I never thought of that because, like, he is a man, as we are men. I mean, right. Just, just look at us. You right. Just think that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you're going to be walking around in an atmosphere that is really probably not good for a first date. There's going to be tons of hot-looking broads walking around with their titties and pussies hanging out. Right. And you're going to be there with your first date. Right. She's going to expect you to be focused on her and not the tons of hot-looking pussy that's tramping around that you're going to be wanting to look at. So, I mean, if I was you, buddy, I would be putting on some fucking wraparound sunglasses and keeping my head locked like this the whole time. Well, Brain, I just want you to know, keep your mind on Heather. I will take care of all the porno stars for you, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, I think we can move on to our big... Day at SteelCon. We're on your side too, by the way, Brain. I hope it works out for you. Uh, you're a good dude, and uh, I hope it works out. I hope everything goes well for you. We're not busting on you because we don't love you. We do love you. That's why we're busting on you. So we just want everything to go well. Disclaimer. But anyway, speech. Let's get into the Steel City Con shit because we got a ton to cover, and I think the audience is gonna love this. I had a great time meeting all the. Pro nerds out there, and I am a 50-year-old nerd, and I fit in well at this point. I mean, there were people in costumes and stuff. It was like, what was that? I told you I had to go look, look for an ATM to get money, 
and your friends would like, <laughs> where did Speaks go? And you're like, well, he's in a cave. Yeah, I'm like, how fucking hard could it be to find him? He's the only asshole running around in a cave. And then I look around, and there's 500 other assholes yeah. running around in a cave. <laughs> so guess what? It was pretty fucking tough to find him. <laughs> yeah. Now, we met um, Alex Cooper. He was great. Um, I had a good time with Alex. Uh, what did you think, Bob? I have to say, I mean, uh, when you go to these certain things, I mean, it's really never as long as you'd like it to be. But I have to say he was truly a gentleman, and he was super, super nice in the few moments we got to see him. And I would highly recommend it. I, I, I loved the dude since I was a kid. Always been a fan of his work. I think he's an incredible entertainer. And uh, I, I have to say, I, I could, you know, a super duper nice gentleman. In fact, this is uh, this is me next Tina with the man right there. I hope you guys can see this. Now I saw him in concert in Anaheim on Halloween with Rob Zombie. He put on an amazing show. Um, have you ever seen him, Bob? Who Rob Zombie? No, uh, Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper, I, uh, he's one of those dudes that I've loved since as a kid, but I've never been with somebody that would want to go with me, and I, you don't want to be that dude where I go myself. So, no, I've always wanted to. It's on my bucket list. I've always wanted to see Alice Cooper. I've never gotten a chance. Uh, I watch him on The Muppet Show. I had his LPs when I was a kid. I had a lunchbox of Alice Cooper. Uh, I'd probably, uh, I would order a piece of Alice Cooper shit on eBay and put it in a plaque if I could. That's how much I like the guy, but... Unfortunately, no, I've never got to see him live. Well, I know X-Tina has. X-Tina just got to see him about, oh, like four years ago. I was blown away. The The stamina this man has on stage is unbelievable. Now, he Phenomenal. still brings down the, the white bowing constrictor snake. Does he do that anymore? I don't know. Now, he, there was a lot of props and a lot of interesting things, a lot of dancers with boobs and blood. Mm. Um, yeah. Two my favorite what things more can you want, right? There you go. Now, one of the things I like the best is you know how, like, the Who, they do, like, rock opera and stuff. Oh, I, I mean, like, yeah, and Queen does it. Now, Alice Cooper is really the first guy that came up with that concept. And at his concerts, I mean, his songs go, like, in order, they tell a story, like Quadrophenia. What's your favorite Cooper album, man? I'll tell you one. Every, I love Welcome to My Nightmare, which seems to be everybody's, but then, right. I think one album of his that doesn't get a lot of love is uh, Dada. Like, did you, no, I, I, most, I mentioned that to most people, and they've never even heard of it, and it's such a good, and it's a concept album. Each song tells a story. I don't right. want to ruin it, but like, just listen to that. Like, If you never heard that, that's uh, one of my balls' favorite Cooper albums. Check now, out. one of my favorite songs of his is Only Women Bleed. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a, a classic. Great song. Oh, my God. I could rattle off. Um, like Cooper I Cooper like Goes Out for Summer. I like Guar's cover of that, even. That's, that's yeah, pretty good. Uh, his later step, Hey Stupid. That's a great song. Oh, fucking Poison, I'll man. Okay, Poison. I poison. Yeah. Boy, oh, man, 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 another man. great hey, song. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Yeah. Uh, yes. Well, no, that was yes. probably Friday 13th. And, uh, what was that man behind the mask? That was Friday 13th, I think. Was it 2 or 3 that was it from? Hey, guys. Now, yes. Um, we have someone in chat that says, Didn't Alice Cooper throw back a chicken uh, into the audience one time? Mm. I, I, always, I, I always thought that was Ozzy Osbourne, wasn't that? A, he, he bit, bit that off the bat. But I also heard something about a chicken. Like I, I think I'm thinking that might be Ozzy. I could be wrong. We might want to Google that shit. But uh, I'm still thinking that might have been an Ozzy thing. Ozzy bit the head off a bat. Mm -hmm. Now I never heard about a chicken. Um, I know Alice is a really good golfer. Mm -hmm. I heard he was like an ordained minister at one time too. I don't know how true. Really? Oh my God! Can he marry like, us? That yeah, like was, was his, I, I, that or maybe his, yeah, I, maybe his he family. Marry was. you? It was, yeah, if amazing. not, maybe his dad was. I know somebody. They, they came from. I think he came from a religious family, which I thought was surprising. Now, now you would probably know this, Bob. You're a horror fan. I mean, well, I'm a horror that, fan and a horror fan. Well, yeah, but uh, the two two separately <laughs> different things. Speech, but go ahead, please. Was was Alice in any horror movie? Oh yes, he was actually. Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh shit, was it called? Um, 
Oh, he had his own movie. It was called Monster Dog. And it's actually only available on bootleg. And one of my favorite Owl songs is from that soundtrack, which you don't get on anything else. It was called Identity Crisis. And it was fucking awesome, dude. The video is hysterical. You can watch it on YouTube. Alice Cooper, Identity Crisis. And uh, he's, he's like a dude, and it's like the first-person narrative where he's a nut, and he has split personalities, and he's like, some days I'm James Bond. And you see him all fucking clean cut. He's like, James Bond's like, some days I'm merely the kid. And he has like the fucking lasso. And he's like, some days I'm like Jack the Ripper. And he's all running around like fucking slash. <laughs> Check it out. Great fucking song. It's on YouTube. Hey, guys, I just found the uh, information. Alice Cooper did, in fact, throw a chicken. Really? However... Um, sort of to defend him, a fan threw a chicken on stage, and he in turn threw it back threw into the back. audience. Oh, okay. and then he got the bad rap over. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, at least he wasn't like trying to bite the head off or fuck a chicken on stage. There, or something. <laughs> yeah. there you go. Now, um, let's give out the the call number. Yes. Uh, yeah. Three two three three one zero. What is that? Two eight two zero. Now, usually I'm the person that calls into the ball show, but I'm here today, so we need someone out there yeah, to take as, my yeah, place. As much as we like to blabber back and forth, we do love your fans, too. We love the air. There you go. Or call and say I'm a big fucking dickhead. That's cool. There you go. I love all that, so please call in. There you go. And don't forget our sponsors. Don't we have sponsor speech? Yeah, we have uh, two timid. How's that working? How's two timid working? Yeah. Okay. Okay. That sounds like it's okay. working very well. Oh, it does. <laughs> it does. I think it's um, that chicken that uh, Alice Cooper threw back in the uh, crowd, but. Uh, <laughs> Oh. That was fucking awesome, Jeff. There you go. <laughs> hey, no, uh, so Too Timid, they, they were sponsoring us just for a couple episodes. We're done with that. It was it a was successful run. Uh, now we have a new sponsor, and it's Clips for, clip. it's clips for Sale. But um, they did not, uh, it, their, their sponsorship does not start yet, probably later in the week. Oh, okay. Well, well uh, since uh, you can feel free to donate to us at www.gonzopodcast.com though if you like any of the talent that you hear or we have a plethora of great entertaining shows and mine as well so if you guys would like to enter, you know, donate to that in the meantime that would be great too and uh, if you want to hire me or uh, Medicaid P or that one guy that I'm not supposed to talk about because I'm banned from my show who's that? I've been hearing and any of the other amazing talent, call Agent Jim at Madhouse Talent at 888-244-0203. It's 0302. Sorry about that. I'm sorry. I'm speech impediment, man. I'm dyslexic. Dyslexic. <laughs> dyslexic. De- that too. That's yeah. worse than dyslexic. Holy that fuck, dude. Are you waiting for to get to the dude. hospital? <laughs> I'm a mad. I'm a mad. <laughs> so, a speech. On. How long did it take you to drive to, to Ball's house? How long? Yeah. I Well, I flew in Friday. I'm staying at Ball's house. Uh, we went to SteelCon Saturday. Today was kind of a rest day. Um, Monday night, we're going to a Pittsburgh baseball game. And then Tuesday, I'll be flying home. Did, uh, uh, Balls, is there any uh, dirt you want to give us on speeches um, sleeping at your house? Well, I mean, as much as I, I'm, I'm a horrible guest here at the Balls residence, so I mean, uh, so sleep, speech is usually rocking my couch here. So I mean, uh, the casting couch. He's, he's laying on the casting couch and probably, a, you know, reminiscent puddles of sticky, translucent goo of, uh, you know, low uh-huh. past. So I mean, I'm not a good guest, but I mean, I mean, other than that, he's a pretty yes, good, he's, a, I, he's I, a pretty damn good guest. I have to meet. He, he doesn't put his dick in our drawers of peanut butter. He doesn't, right. uh, he doesn't leave shit stains in our commode. Uh, he doesn't try hitting on Christina, does he? No, no, no. no. I'm afraid of her. She'll beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> She's like K girl. See the test chair. Hey guys, uh. Break, breaking news. I don't know who would win that fight. If yeah, I I'm pretty. She's a bad bitch. Well, wait a minute. Last night we did go to the that concert, and 
Christina, you did show me how to skank. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I took spe- we took speech to his first ska show. I'm into uh, ska music heavily, which a lot of people don't know what that is. And, uh, you know, a quick version is if you like reggae, throw some fucking horns into it. And uh, we saw you got these it. guys, the Slackers. So you got to see one of my favorite bands in the world last night, the Slackers. And I actually talked to the lead singer, and he's actually going to be appearing on my show here very shortly uh, via interview by phone. So. I'm excited about that. His name's Vic Ruggiero, so look forward to that, Cats. Uh, I will be. Uh, other than that, uh, I don't know, Speech. Uh, oh, why don't we get into our story from Steel City <laughs> Con? We do have we, some dirt. We have a major story for Gary Busey. You want to start with I'll it? I'll start it, and you pick up where okay. you need to pick up at. I personally, I think we both was uh, super eager to meet Gary Busey. We liked him on the Stern Show. Been a fan of him since he was a kid. Uh, he's a lunatic to the point where I enjoy his his antics. I like his little Buseyisms, like "Oh, we gotta be a team together. Everybody achieves more." That shit. Like I always think that shit's hysterical. I always knew he was gonna be crazier than a shit house rat when you met him, but I thought it would be kind of in a more friendlier way, perhaps. So we go, we get like this, we pay our, you know, he shakes us upside down uh, to get the money out of our pockets to get our professional picture with Gary Busey, which was, you know, a dream come true to me, man, because I love that motherfucker. So so we get, we pay the money, we go, uh, we're waiting in line, uh, we get there, and we're in line, his line's right from where we wait in to get the professional photo line. So, uh... Yeah, you know, we're waiting, and speech runs over to his table because, like, we're trying to. We tr- we asked everybody, man. Uh, we had a tape recorder set up. We I tried my we, best. We, we yeah. tried our best to get everybody to talk to us. And the people there at the convention shut us off immediately, and or, or their agent shut us off immediately. Nobody trusted us. I don't know. If I it's think, just the way we I got. think that 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 uh, question I asked that. Uh, Matt girl got around. Something happened. Either that or like the fact that you're in a fucking cape and you're a grown man and I look like a serial rapist who just escaped, uh, escaped from prison. I don't know why they wouldn't want to talk to us. But and other than that, he comes, he's like, I'm going to go ask Gary Busey now while we're waiting in line if we can interview him. And I'm like, oh my God, that's a great idea, dude. So he's he, he starts running over, man. He's booking like this. And I happen to fucking glance over at Gary Busey's table. He makes he, he makes eye contact. He like slouches up like this, makes eye contact with speech, fucking running full blast over in his goddamn fucking Superman outfit. Piercing his head, fucking whips up like this, and he's like, and he sees him. He's like, it looks like he didn't know where to shit or wind his watch. Like, what the fuck am I in for, man? So then, his his fucking his his agent or publicist just fucking cuts speech off right at the pass. He's like, oh, what are you what are you doing? And he's like, well, I wanted to you know. I wanted to ask him if we could interview him, you know, and uh, he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't budge, man. So we, uh, so we get in line. They this wouldn't get break. Yeah, they went. So he decides to take a fucking break. There's like hundreds of people waiting to get this fucking picture with him, and he's like, "Man, I'm, I'm going to take a break. Uh, you know, who, who gives a shit about all these people waiting to pay all this money?" So they take a break. It was supposed to be five minutes. Thirty-five minutes later. There's a fucking mob roll. There's tons of people. We're still waiting in line. People are getting pissed, man. And he's outside smoking a cigarette or doing whatever the fuck he was. We think he's honestly, he was out there, you know, snorting fucking blow off a hooker's ass crack or something. Because finally, this (laughs) motherfucker decides to come in. He comes in. He has his wraparound shades on. Me and Speech look at each other. He whips these fucking glasses off. His one eyeball is fucking pointing out to the fucking east. The other one's like down this way. He's all fucking cracked out. He's like, and he's got the fucking juicy jar on. And so then, uh, luck. I was the lucky one that got to go first. So I'm not sure. Oh, so that there was more antics before I waited in line. So then his manager, which seemed really cool, goes, "Hey, you know who that? I was wearing my Baba Booey shirt." with the big goofy cartoon that says Noin. So his, his agent's like, look, Gary, you know who that is? And he's like, oh, yeah. And he goes, uh, you know, Gary Delabate. And he goes, who, who is that? He goes, oh, is, this, is that Barack Obama? Is that Barack, Barack, is that Obama? Barack Obama? And he's like, he's like, oh. and he just walks in to get the fucking picture. And, and so we're into the place where everybody needs to take the picture. So, so I, I, I'm like, oh, God. And so, like, I'm standing there. He's like, 
I go to get him. His family's in front of me. It's his dad and his son. And he's like, he's all pissed off and disgruntled that he fucking has to go in there and take pictures of all of us. And he's like, it was like if you was to wait in a fucking deli line and you take the little ticket from the red counter thing. So then he's like at the top of his lungs. He goes to tell these people to come in. He goes, next! <laughs> and his jaw's off and his eyes are all fucking crap out. And this fucking dad and son looked at each other like, I don't even know if we want to go in now. Holy fuck. So they go in, and then he, it, it wasn't even 30 seconds, and they come rolling out, and they look like they've seen a fucking deer in the headlights. So I go in, and I, I go up to him, and I'm like, sir, I've been a fan of yours forever. I'm so happy to meet you, and, and, I, I'm, and he was just like, he was like, okay, okay, okay. So he's like, okay, okay. And they take the picture, and I'm like, motherfucker. So then I, I come out, and he's like, next! And then speech goes in. And then I go in, and soon as I walk in, I'm like, Gary, how are you doing? I'm speech impediment man from the Howard Stern Show. Can I get a word with you afterwards for our podcast? And he's like, just shut the fuck up, take the picture, take the picture. So we, we, we take the picture, and then afterwards I shake his hand, and I go, well, how about the interview? And he gives me that look like, I don't know, like, I don't know who the fuck you are and stuff. <laughs> Come to think of it, maybe it was best we didn't get the interview because he might have tackled me like he tackled Howard Stern. But, I mean, um, yeah, show me a picture. So just to, just to illustrate <laughs> how you know this story is true, nothing says, fuck you, I don't want to be here, I got your money, I couldn't give a shit now. Other than this, I really hope you guys can see this. <laughs> this is how happy Gary Busey was to be standing next to the balls. Right, hold on, I gotta let me get my fat ass up here. I think there's too much light, but you gotta see the look on this motherfucker's face. Like, look at this. Can you see this? Hey, there's me all happy on the side. You don't have to see me. Just know I'm in, in my. In, in, I'm super happy. But look at this fucking sour puss motherfucker. Look at him. He looks like uh, you know, he, he's like. <laughs> He's like, I, he goes, if I was on fire there, like, he wouldn't have fucking Gary Busey pissed on me to put me out. Like, that's how excited he was to be standing next to me. At least Speech got, like, a fucking, he got his cocaine all crud jawed all out. He's I all got like, a halfway decent He got a halfway smile. fucking coked out I, fucking jaw. I think he was doing that just to get me the fuck out of there. Hey guys! God. Hey guys! Yeah, if I don't make it good, this guy's. Hey guys! I be up my asshole all fucking weeks. So. I got a question yeah. for you guys. So, sure. is, okay, so I saw a picture on Twitter or something with Christine and Tiffany. And wow. right? Oh yeah, Christina got to got to meet her as well. Okay, so here's my question: Do these stars like if they become so like like if they went from D class celebrities to like E class celebrities and they just go from these con shows um, from city to city and get picture and autograph money. That's all they do. That's it. That's all they do. How much, how much do these guys get per picture or per autograph? Oh, it's ridiculous, man. They make money hand over fist and each person is individual, but it's sickening. Like Ale, Alice got 80, hey, Gary Busey got 50, uh, what? Barbara Eaton was There's there. Tiffany from the 80s. Everybody remember um, I, I think, think we're, we're alone, alone now. <laughs> she still looks good. She yeah, she looks pretty good, but listen, you can tell she is like definitely the Z-grade celebrity there. Her her uh, cost was 20 bucks. I was shocked. To... <laughs> I thought she was going to be like, right. fucking Alice Cooper was 80 bucks, and that was just for a picture. Uh, let's see, her Busey was 50. Uh, I met uh, Barbara Eaton. I dream a genie. She was only like 30 bucks. Yeah. And I gotta say, but would you bet her now? Yeah, I still, still, still do her. It's happening. I have to say, for yeah. like, she has to be eighty years old and like. Uh, She's in good shape. She looked in better great shape than Busey. Shape. I mean, uh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what I, I got. Do they do like voicemails and stuff for you too? Like, will they leave a voicemail on your phone, a greeting? I don't know about all that. I mean, uh, if they're there, they're obviously going to do pretty much anything for money. So, I well, just... I mean, I walked around with the tape recorder. I. I tried to get anything I can, but like it was like every time I was shut down by like 
their business manager or yeah they seen us coming yeah. they, they just swooped right in and shut it down almost like immediately <laughs> I mean, yeah yeah like the celebrity they already know what's gonna happen and stuff but we had a great time saw bruce durham there uh, a lot of guy that i tell you what the dude that surprised me there was the emperor from star wars and all the nerds their fucking pussies were wet as hell and it was like a hundred bucks just to get close to that dude for a picture and like uh, he, it was crazy like i mean you, and, and that's the thing too sometimes they'll snare you in where you can't get a picture with them unless you buy their autograph and their shitty fucking pictures so it, it's a fucking it's a racket and a half i mean uh, i guarantee that star wars guy rolled out from one weekend with probably at least a hundred grand in his pocket because uh uh, if you could have seen the fucking lines and lines and lines of people, I mean, oh, that'll be there next time because Mike Nesmith from the Monkees will be there, so that'll be my big draw. <laughs> so, isn't it? Now, is, isn't it kind of embarrassing when you go there and you see these people with like no lines? Just sitting. I, I feel bad for him actually. I was surprised. Like Tiffany had no line; you could just waltz right up to her, and like I thought she'd be a little more talkative for being to the fact that like X Tina was like her first customer in probably a day. And uh, <laughs> she was just like, okay, here's a picture. She was nice, though, mind you, but she was like, you know, he was, oh, okay, here's a picture. Okay, I'm done. Get the fuck out of here. You know? <laughs> I thought she would at least have been, like, a little more inquisitive and, like, you know, tried to make a little small talk. But, I mean. It probably gets know. old, man. It probably gets really old. Yeah, dealing with a bunch. Have you seen all these fuck nuts in these outfits and costumes? And there was, like, about 30, uh, you know, 30 fucking really fat bitches that thought they were Harley Quinn. And they got their big old fucking gut hanging out and they're big fat ass trying to in these leotards and like in these fishnets and you're like it looked, looked like harley quinn ate three other harley quinns and they're all fucking walking around and then there was 500 people dressed up as negan uh, from the walking dead that looked nothing like him they looked more like fucking schneider from one day at a time but uh <laughs> you know it was just uh, <laughs> and then you see all the freakos and it was just it's worth going just to look at all the, the, the i think i'm a nerd but then i walk around and i'm like nah there's nothing wrong with you because you're not dressed in costume and you know, I don't have, uh, you know, like a porn of Pikachu, like uh, fan fiction. So I think I'm doing okay. This is interesting. Um, we were wondering, you know, how much these people make doing these things. And it is worth it to them. Read that part there. Even the ones that aren't really anybody. Oh, this is interesting. It says, even actors with small roles in comic book TV shows and movies easily can make five to ten thousand fucking dollars a day at these things. Then they usually get it up front, too, as well as a huge cut of the cash. And there's always cash cash only accepted, taken for autographs and photos. So that means they're making fucking, you know, I, I mean, thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars for really minimal effort. So. Now, last time you saw Eddie Monster, how much did yeah. he cost? It wasn't much, what, 30? I think he was 40. 40. But I have 40. to say, Eddie Monster was a cool motherfucker, he man. Like, nice, man. He stood there and he fucking talked to me about the monsters for a half hour. And, uh, you know, he jerked my dick off a little bit. And it was uh, it was worth 40 bucks. Now, sure. they had that little kid from The Shining, you know. Dude, Red Rum, Red, Red, Red Rum. I felt bad for him because I didn't even see anybody there for him. Yeah. Once you grow, If you're a kid star and you grow up, nobody gives a fuck about you anymore. I mean, yeah. Now, uh, one of the girls that were there, I forget her name. Remember the one I told you that was in Son of Anarchy? The one in the ba biker threw the her on... The oh, yeah, the, yeah. the gish lady. Yeah, the he threw story. her on the hood of the cop car and did her. I wanted to go up and ask her, like, how that scene went, but when I went up there, her handler stopped me. Yeah, I think so. he would have probably tased <laughs> you, and then we would have been ex excluded yeah. Yeah. out. There probably. was a bunch of wrestling dickheads there. I don't care about that. Yeah, there, there was... Uh, uh, guy that looked like the Undertaker and Kane. Uh, even there was a guy that uh, when I was little, I used to watch the Night Stalker, Koshak. Oh, yeah, they were the McGavin. guy dressed right like sure. that, Darren McGavin stuff. But <laughs> There was a great speech story that you guys did in here. There was this big motherfucker. He's on like stilts and he's he's dressed he's dressed up like Chewbacca. <laughs> He's in a big Chewbacca suit. This thing's like fucking eight. It's like eight or nine feet tall. And this dumb fuck's running, walking around in it. It's really a good costume. So my buddies are like, ask him if he has a regular dog dick or if he has a people dick. 
And then Speech is like, no, no, no. So he goes over and he, and he, 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 ends up, he, he goes up. He's like ball height to this fucking dude in his costume. And he looks up and there's a big crowd of people. And the only thing that comes out of the bus goes, you're a big fucker, ain't you? <laughs> he looked down. And he looks down and he like turns his head. And all these people in the line are laughing. Did you make the chewy growl? He's like, oh. Hey, guys. <laughs> Hey guys, we have a uh, we have a call from Mark. Are you guys ready? Sure, yeah, sure. Hi, Mark. Here we go. Hey, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. Hey, Mark. What's up? Hey, got guys, you. this is Pete Television. I heard you guys were talking about me. Uh, Mark who? Mark who? Yeah, is Jeff Henson there? Yeah. Is this Bray? Uh, it's some troll or something. Go ahead. <laughs> but if you've never been to one of these, Jeff, you need to go to them. They're the, in fact, there were a lot of hot girls walking around. In fact, I twittered some pictures with me and, and some genie ch- chicks. And there was a chick from um, Pirates of Caribbean. Don't let him fool you, man. He's a pretty smooth motherfucker. Yeah, right. I'm watching him. I'm the I'm the dude taking the pictures, and he's like, he'll just he has no fear. He'll walk up to the chick, and he's like, <laughs> he's like, Mir, what movie are you from? Well, and like, you... uh, and here and he's, he's like, oh, I'm like a Jedi. I'm in the comic books and this and this. And he's like, he's like, oh, he's like, yeah, that's nice. He's like, you're pretty, you know. Yeah. Like, like they're all eating it up. He's like, I might put you in my show. Yeah. They're all like fucking. <laughs> They're all about yeah. it, man. Like, he's, uh, you know, I'm like, speech, yeah. speech yeah. knows how to talk to the ladies. Yeah. No we, we met a couple Howard fans here. There, they know who we are. They knew who I was. They knew who Bald was. Surprisingly, yes. Yeah, it was, <laughs> a, it was a good time. I, it's well worth it. I, I'm thinking I'll make him back in August. I want to see Michael Nesmith of the monkeys. I used to love the monkeys. I still do, I man. Little, I love them since yeah. I was a kid. People can laugh all you want, but I love the monkeys. Yeah, man. Man. I had a great yeah. story. I seen fucking Davy Jones back in my drunken, stupid years, and uh, it was just him. He was doing a solo performance, and I actually almost got stopped the show and got kicked out. So I'm fucking drunk off my... It's one of those fucking, you know, uh, old people shows where you can hear a pin drop. I was the only probably young person there at the time. I was probably in my early 20s. And uh, everybody there is like over 50, 60, 70. And like, you can hear a pin drop to this fucking show. And I'm excited because I'm seeing Davy Jones from the fucking Monkees, man. So I'm drinking fucking Old English Special Reserve. I get in there, I'm fucking blitzed out of my mind. So every time he comes out, I'm like, fucking Davy! You fucking rock, Davey! And he's like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'm like, every, then the next time he comes out, and I'm like, Davey, you fucking rock! And he's like, he's like, thank, thank, thank you. Back there. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. And I'm like, <laughs> so he comes out, I'm like, fucking Davey, do it! So I was like, he's like, all right, thank you. Back in the back there. Thank you very much. Enough of that. Please, please don't do that no more. So I got this. I'm like, I embarrassed the shit out of all this guy. So then all the security comes over, like, you're going to have to fucking calm down. Now, <laughs> what would be your favorite monkey song? Oh, dude, God, that's like asking, like, what's my favorite, you know, beat-off lotion? I mean, that's a tough <laughs> decision. I don't know, man. Oh. My favorite. I like I'm Not Your Stepping Stone. I like fucking. That's Dave a great Lear. song. I like fucking. I like I'm gonna buy me about buy me a dog only because of the shitty little jokes they do in the most. Like it's like I was playing cards with the natives last night. Oh, it uh, was it. Uh, oh fuck, I fucked it up. <laughs> My favorite were uh, <laughs> I, I like uh, actually. <laughs> Last Train to Clarkville. Oh, that was too. a great one. I liked um. She, oh yeah, that was a good song. Uh, like all king sources and yeah. all the kings, man. In, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In fact, when I got married, one of my songs was "I'm a Believer," but that didn't work out. So obviously, she wasn't a believer. Maybe not. Um, I ever heard the song "Listen to the Band"? Of course, that man. was a I, great song. I have, I have like the music one. box. I have everything they ever did. Yeah. I have all their TV series. They put I have out a monkey some good songs. 
In fact, yeah. who's left though? I think there's only what uh, Peter Torks left. Right. Davey, not Davey, he's dead. Michael Nesmith is alive and, uh, and Mickey. Mickey, yeah. That's it. I thought the 25th reunion at Pacific Campbell Theater in California a couple, I mean, I got this was like 10, 10, 15 years ago. Last time I seen him, it was uh, when Nesmith left. It was the three of them. And I guess it was a really good show. Yeah. But I mean, uh, yeah, other than that, I don't, are they in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Uh, God, that's a good question. I mean, in fact, we we saw um, Howard's induction of uh, Bon Jovi today. I must say, he did a very was, good that job. That was excellent, man. Like, yeah. I have to say, I'm very excited. I can't wait to hear the show tomorrow so I can hear. In fact, I might call in about that. I, I just want to, for somebody that was so paranoid and, and backward and crazy about it and shit, right. man, it, you, it just goes to show you how well he works under pressure because it was and it was. Brilliant. Right, right. I, I, and, uh, Bon Jovi really got it right because that's the only person I think that could could have pretty uh, hit the nail on the head, man. Right. Like I was uh, right. super proud to, to see that today. I wish I could have been there. Right, and Howard was funny too. I mean, he was joking on uh, Richie Sambor's big dick. And... <laughs> yeah, it was a lot edgier than I thought that they'd let him get away yeah. with. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. that's what I liked about it too. I thought it'd be kind of. You know, low key, but no, it's it was it was Howard and all his glory, man. It was great. Speaking of Dick, you no, you had a question. Remember, oh. what, <laughs> tell the audience your question. Oh, here we go, cats. I got a poll for you. We were, uh, you know, we were arguing, and I uh, this was a question I've been a couple questions actually I've been asking people. This is a uh, and or question. If you had a gun to your head, speech, you have a gun to your head. Right. And you had to give a blowjob to either Tarzan or Swamp Thing, who would you pick? Now, my choice was Tarzan, because, I mean, he is, I mean, that is a, a human. I mean, I'm not homosexual, but I mean... <laughs> but said no, I wouldn't do Tarzan. Now, I wouldn't do Swamp Thing. Now, my logic over Swamp Thing was, cause you didn't know what it was. If it was toxic, if there was like algae or poison in the swamp or whatever. I mean, and. <laughs> I didn't even have you buffled by that. Yeah, you yeah, said you never bit, thought I'm about it. I thought about it. I've had plenty of time to think about it. It's, these thoughts is what's kept me from ever becoming a successful um, part of society. But uh, I mean, but still, man, like uh, you, you're, it's a real dick. Like if I'm gonna put Swamp Thing's fucking uh, dick in my mouth. Like, it, I could just fucking close my eyes and pretend I'm fu It's a salad, you know? It's the closest thing to a fucking plant you're going to so get. So, if he fucking bricks in my mouth, it's like salad dressing, I'd imagine. Uh, you know, it'd be like Thousand Island. Which, by the way, folks, Balls hates salad, so that's almost more... Not as much as I hate sucking a dick. Yeah, that's so, true. So, are we saying you've never had your salad talk? Well, no, that's not true. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's, I don't look at me. Don't look at me. I don't enjoy it. Wasn't right? me. I, I, I don't enjoy it. I have had it done to me. I uh, don't think it was done well. Uh, but even if I, it was done well enough to know that I'm not a fan. So. <laughs> yeah. Would you care to chime in on that question? Yeah, I, I, I would just answer it with a sound. Here we go. It's a jungle. It's a jungle cricket. sound. Is that cricket? Like, hey, here's another good point, man. He's fucking lonely in that jungle. I guarantee that dick wouldn't want to, in an animal some dollar down the road. So it's got like fucking leopard shit on the tip of his dick. I guarantee that's dick. That dick's one in an animal at least so once or twice. Big, yeah. And he don't. He only bathes in the fucking lake like once every <laughs> six months. So you're gonna have encrusted dried fucking leopard shit in the tip of your dick, and you're gonna put that in your mouth, speech. Congratulations. <laughs> hey, Melissa in chat says Swamp Thing because his sack wouldn't be sweaty. <laughs> oh, oh, 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. Team Swamp okay. Thing. Okay. Keep voting. Okay. Keep voting. <laughs> okay. Keep voting. Well, you're going to put that on Twitter, aren't you? I'm gonna, I am now. Hell yeah. Well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> or call in and debate there us. There you go. Tell hey. me whose cock you'd like to have in your mouth, there audience. There you Come go. On. So Stop Jeff, being lazy. Call in here. Call so, in Jeff, number. how is our patron scene going? Yeah, we've, got, um, we've got a couple... We got about four people on there. Uh, we're trying to enhance it. Um, we do have some baseball cards that were uh, are in production yes, right now. and I I need one. I want an autograph Eric baseball card, and I want a shout out on his show. You're gonna get that shout out next Friday, and the baseball cards are being sent to me, and I gotta send them to Eric to get signed, and then we'll we'll get you one. Okay, now, hey. now, me and Bob were talking right before this show. Now, since Eric is more interested in going to the pig row than being a company man and going to the sex expo, and I consider myself the number two whack packer, soon to be number one, but... Can I get his appearance fee? Cause he's not coming. I I definitely think you should talk to Jim about Agent Jim about that. Okay. Well, Jim, if you're out there, call he is in. out there. He's know. he's telling everybody if uh, they want to hire someone for a, a video message, it's eight 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 two four four zero three zero two. Operators are standing by. Hey, speech. Uh, Chauncey in chat wanted to know why is your face red. I have ro rosacea. Oh. I'm not a, a fucking drunk. Everyone <laughs> seems I'm a fucking drunk. <laughs> I have rosacea. Yeah, someone says, looking forward to speeches, weekly phone calls to teen mom. I don't think that's going to happen anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that might be a good question for teen mom about the swamp thing. The well, if there you go. There you go. Or I have this question, folks. Here might is one you might like as well. If you're sitting nude in a, in a chair watching television at home, you're sitting nude, having a nice fucking day to yourself, and you're eating a cookie, and a piece breaks off and falls on your balls, you know, or your twat, either one, would you still eat the piece of cookie? Depends on how good the cookie is. Chip to hoy. Okay, I'm eating it. Okay. Well, yeah, that's, uh, that's hard. I mean, now. Now, uh, Oreo. Yeah, because that's still hard. That'll be, uh, you know... Uh, what if it's that that fake Oreo, the Hydrox? Oh, no, Hydrox. I'm just letting yeah. it fall down my balls. I'm now, kidding. let me ask you. Uh, if it falls on your balls, is does the five-second rule apply? Yeah, I would definitely think so. Okay. What do you think, Jeff? <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking about it, and I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. Hey, okay, Jeff, that's hey. why we have you producing. If it's, if it's a lady lock, I don't think so. Because that crazy feeling is going to get in my chunk. Hey. And then it's going to get my pubic hair. And then there's a chance I might eat a pube if I fucking was to eat them. <laughs> Crunchy. Yeah. Yeah. We do have another caller. Sure. I think it might be not Mr. White. I love him. Casey, how hey, you hey, doing? What's up, guys? How hey, you doing? Now, Casey, let me, let me ask you a question. Now, you're... <laughs> what? Go ahead. About you're anal? brain's buddy at the sex expo, and you're supposed to get him banged by hookers and strippers, but now he's saying he's bringing a date. I mean, what's the... Strategy here. What's the plan? Hey, you know what? It's that's that's really uh, funny that you asked because my my show uh, coming up in like thirty minutes here. That is a big part of of that show. Actually, Brain and I talk strategy about how and who, and we're we're gonna get him laid and everything. So we we talk about that for um, it's a it's a you know big portion of the of my show. So there, so when you, I'm just asking, when you go out with a girl, I mean, there's already a strategy in your head. Like, if he says this, I'm going to do that. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually went on a date last night, and it was my first time going out with this girl. And the the bad news is we didn't fuck, but I mean we did. I did, you know, like make out with her, and so it's it's open for another time. That I'm pretty sure the next time I go out there, we're gonna we're gonna fuck. But uh, yeah, didn't didn't have sex last night. But yeah, you're right. I mean, there's always a, there's always a strategy. Well, let me ask X T. She's a chick. What's the protocol for banging a dude after dates? How many dates you make? Hmm. At least two. Well, three. I think At I think, I think typical... three. threes for sure. Threes. I mean, nothing's for sure, but yeah. If three you really have chemistry and you really like each other, then yeah, three is a good. I'd say three. Well, Casey, there's see? good news. You only got two and a half. You're getting fucked, brother. <laughs> well, I say three Casey's is anal. Got, Casey's two, got two, a, two is fucking. Three is anal. Casey's got a good gig. You were telling me that you're signed up with this uh, dodgeball class at with a Kickball. college chick, and you're banging. College chick, how's that going? It's it's kickball, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, there's a girl on there also that I that I have my eyes on. I got her number. Uh, we have hung out after kickball, not a date type scenario. But here's here's my problem with that girl, and I mean, I've had this problem with other girls in the past, but she has a, a horrible laugh. Like she she snorts when she laughs. She sounds like a pig. And see the snorter. And I I can't help but be funny. What am I supposed to do? Not be funny? Now now le- now let me ask you. Last night I was listening to K Girl Show, and she seems to think that you guys are on the path of banging now. What do you, what do you think? Well, look, she sent me a, a picture of her tits, and <laughs> that got me hard. She's got great tits. Um, she's got a vagina, which is, well, those are my two qualifications for me having sex with somebody. So she's met reasonable. she's met all qualifications for me so far. <laughs> now, what what? What worries me a little bit is like, didn't didn't she get arrested for prostitution in Vegas? Like, right? Am I crazy? Yeah, that? yeah, that's the rumor. I mean, uh, are you concerned about that? Yeah, I'm concerned about my dick. Like, I don't want to like fuck. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. I don't want to like knowingly put my dick into something. Well, well, that... Casey, Casey, the old saying, <laughs> no love or no glove, no love, right? No love, no love. There's a good one, too. Like, look at her mouth. Like, if she takes care of her teeth, if she takes care of this hole, she takes care of this hole. So, there you go. Where's the lip on? Hey, since we got you on the phone, Ball dude. Here. Hey, since we got you on the phone, we were going to do a little depravity real fast before the show ends, and I'd like you to be part of it, too, and show your concept of speech. There you go. Christina? Yeah, I'm coming home. You know her. You love her. It's x It's x That time of day. It's that time of day for depravity. Don't we love depravity, people? Um, so I don't know how this isn't, like, the biggest story going. Granted, it's, like, I guess a small time actress, so it's not a big deal, but uh, this is just nuts. Now it is on the news, but there's like this sex ring that a couple of Mm. what actresses are involved in. Uh, The chick, she used to be on Smallville. I guess her name is Allison Mack. Um, Okay. I never really watched Smallville, but I mean, she looks familiar. I've seen her before. Her name is Chloe on the show. Yeah, yeah. So she is like, I guess she somehow got roped in with this guy who runs this sex slavery type thing. And she became Fuck like yeah. number one go-to girl. Hey now. And hey now, hey now. She brings these girls in, I guess, like claiming that she can get them into acting. Hey now. And, you know, they're going to make their careers. And so these are young, you know, impressionable women that are. Jeff, I know. think we need to get these women on our network. 
I'm sure they have a lot to say. Um, <laughs> but they're like branding these people and they're making them like sleep with the cult leader and very Manson like like it's very very bizarre like so and what cracks me up is this girl is like just like this cute normal looking chick if you've never seen her this is I don't know if you can see my phone the reflection here but her name's Allison Mack if you want to look her up but she's you know looks like a normal pretty cute chick, hard but, I'd bang you but yeah she's um the only problem this, I have is that I didn't think of it first. <laughs> uh, I mean, they, it's just so bizarre. Like, how do these people... And then they brand them. This is a, a photo of what they do to these people. Let me see if I can pull it back up. They're, like, uh, putting her initials into them hey, on you, their body. If you made a brand, Casey, what would it look like? Yeah, what would your brand hey, be? You see that... I It'd be an outline of my penis. The good thing is that it, it would be, you know, concealable and very tiny. And I think I'd put it on the wrist, maybe. Maybe. Uh, but so I guess the guy got arrested, but none of these chicks that are involved got arrested oh, yet. And now this chick thinks she's going to, like, take over. So my question is, do you think that she was, is she really this, like, bizarre or was she somehow brainwashed, too? I think it was one of those things. I mean, a lot of those people want to further their career, and they say, hey, this is a good-looking dude. I mean, sure, I'll take one for the team. It may further my career. I mean... It yeah, is how what do you it get is. so far down that rabbit hole is what I'd like to know. It'll be I interesting know, I, I, to hear more about this. We, we, we may want to ask K-Girl. That might be a good question for her. Yeah, maybe. Now, she, was, she, was, uh, she was absolutely brainwashed, and that's one of my, one of my specialties, actually. Um, brainwashing? You can is, do that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how do you, I need to learn how to brainwash. I'm, I'll give Go you ahead. one real simple one. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to teach Brain a Bunch when we're in Chicago, and that's kind of what, what the show is about uh, also right after, you know, right after this show. Um, but, like, one real simple way is, you know, after you've, uh, after you've had sex with a girl a couple of times, like, like a big turn-on for me is uh, coming on somebody's face I'm sure speech can uh, relate to that, but right. <laughs> one, of the, one of the big, the big ways that you kind of, you kind of, I guess you know, brainwash, manipulate somebody into that is just say like, you know, you you kind of ask them like, what, what can I do for you? What what turns you on? Right. Um. You know, what what can I do for you? What turns you on? I'll I'll do anything. I'm I'm willing to do anything or try anything that you want to do, and then. Inevitably, you know, especially You'll if it's just like a normal do. chick, it, it, yeah, yeah it's, it's not going to be anything too crazy. And then they'll ask you the same thing. You, you're like, hey, I want to, I want to come on your face. I want to, I want to bust right. all of your face. And it, it, this has, I'm trying to think back. It, it, that, that has never failed me. That approach. And some, and <laughs> really? when I was in college. When I was in college, like I don't, I don't re- really remember anything about getting my math degree, but I remember in college when a guy told me that. Right. But he remembers manipulating. Ah! Math. Look out, ladies! Look out! <laughs> One at a time, ladies. Now, now, uh, during uh, our talk here, I just thought of a question. Now, okay, uh, this girl say or say in in K girl's case, I. She was a hooker. I'm nothing against that, but she was. With the, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait. Wait. Which is who do you put more blame on, the hooker or the John? Hmm. I, I put my I put my blame on the on the, on the hooker. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. We have Fred, the elephant boy in the house here. <laughs> How would you well, answer neither. that, Casey? Neither. I think I think that 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 neither of them can exist without the other, and I don't I don't knock anybody for 
for making money however they can or somebody trying to get pussy however they can, being a John. However, when it comes to my own dick, that's, yeah. that's when I have an issue with it. That's like putting my own dick in something, that's when I have an issue. Same, same thing with, with like what's, what's now illegal drugs, right? I say drugs should be legal. Let, let people do whatever they want. Let it be federally regulated. Wow. Right, but that doesn't mean I'm going to start doing heroin. Right, you know. I was thinking about this. I mean, they're doing all this law enforcement with back pays and right lift. I mean, just make everything legal, and the government should take some money. Yeah, make it legal. I agree with that. Yeah, totally. I'm yeah, like I'm happy. You know, I mean, I think a lot of, it doesn't matter. It's illegal now, and look how many freaking overdoses there are every freaking day. So, you know, everybody's going to do it. You know, might as well let the government make money off of it. And maybe, just maybe, they'll quit taking so much out of my paycheck. (laughs) 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 I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. It's true. It's true. So, how you been, Casey? Yeah, pretty pretty good actually. Like it was a it was a stressful week. Like speaking about taxes, like my two big things this week was uh, finishing the show and then also finishing my taxes. And what's fucking right. crazy right. is That's is twenty twenty seventeen. I um I got I got laid off from my job on the sixth of January. Okay. Oh, yeah. And I, on, on in like 2017, like I'm working, I have a, I have a, you know, another job now, but I pretty much took all of 2017 off. Right. Like of, of, you know, of, of working, but like my, my severance from losing my job and my, uh, my taxes from working the last month of 2017 at my current job, like I, I ended up making more money on taxes than I ever have. Just because I was like below the the poverty line as far oh, as yeah. you know money that that came in, you know. Yeah. Crazy. And the thing is, is I like I, yeah, like my my the software job I had before, paid so well, and like the severance that they gave me, like I didn't I didn't have to work for that year. Yeah. Like I was I wasn't struggling so or anything. Yeah. Like I just I, I traveled a bunch. It was fucking awesome. Nice. So have you been chicks? And how many countries would you say you bank checks in? <laughs> Only, sadly, just uh, just Canada and U.S. United States. Oh, okay. 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 Well, how many well, states? But <laughs> yeah, how many states? Oh. Um, <laughs> I think five off. five states. Like okay. the one that the one that comes to mind was. I banged a chick in uh, Pennsylvania. What's it mean? Uh, during Hurricane Sandy. Paul's oh, looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go, go, go. If Hurricane I Sandy. if if I know Casey very well, he probably banged him in Hershey, Pennsylvania, right? <laughs> Number one nine and the nine. All right. Hey guys, yeah. we gotta shut it down. You guys did a great Good job tonight. All right. No problem. We'll hey, hear about Casey's was... banging in Pennsylvania. Thanks for calling in, Casey. Oh, yeah, I love, love your that. show. Thank you guys. Thanks, Thanks for guys. getting into the Talk Boss Mel show. We'll see you guys. Nice job tonight. Thank you for XT in the private quarter. Have peace and love. <laughs> Good night, guys. Good night. <laughs> I consider high pitch Eric to be incredibly successful for his IQ. Yeah. I'm not a team player, Jim. Jim, you're right.